NBC Sports presents Ringside. And today it's brought to you by Budweiser. Beach Wood Age for that clean, crisp taste. This Bud's for you. By Kellogg's Brand Flakes. The delicious high fiber cereal that helps keep you fit on the inside. And coming up at NBC, boxing doubleheader with Jesse Benavides defending his USBA junior featherweight crown against James Pipps. Then later on, Sports World, it'll be IBF middleweight champion Frank Tate in a non-title bout going against Sandaline Williams. Hi everybody, Marv Albert with the fight doctor, Ferdy Pacheco, and our boxing day will get underway with undefeated Jesse Benavides. Comes in with a record of 21-0, going against James Pipps, who is 36-1-1 and in what should be an excellent action bout. How do you size it up? Well, it certainly has the elements of an action bout because Pips, known as the Little Warrior, is all offense and heavy punching, whereas Benavides is really a master ring general. It's a crossroad fights. The winner of this should get a major title shot. Alley is looking pretty good at this point, and Sphinx is very wild. Through nearly 50 years as a boxing broadcaster, the legendary Don Dumphy has been on hand for many of boxing's most memorable moments. Round 14, Leonard actually runs out there. You'll remember I remarked in the last round that Hearns might get careless, and he did. Last week, Dumphy was inducted into the new Radio Hall of Fame in New York City, which prompted fond memories of past broadcasts. I think the first uh, network fight that I did, the Lewis Conn fight, back in 1941, and you know we got a rating of 56.7 for that? <laughs> Practically everybody was listening. Conn brought the left hook, he's railing around the ring. Lewis hooks the left and the right to the jaw, and Conn is down from a right cross to the jaw, taking the count. The referee says it's all over. The referee says it's all over. The bout is stopped, the winner, and still champion, Joe Lewis. Well, Don, I don't think that 56 uh, share rating will be duplicated here uh, today on, on NBC, but we are delighted to have you uh, with us. Now, it's uh, been 50 years of sports broadcasting, more than 2,000 fights, for the most part, many on radio. Is there any particular moment that, that would stand out uh, well, from a radio Ma, fight? Ma, one thing does stand out. Now, the fights you just heard were great fights, but not all of them were great. I was doing a fight at the Garden in New York one night. It was a real dog of a fight. Nothing was happening, and I'm blasting away on the radio, blah, 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 blah. and out of the gallery comes this loud voice, I'll bet they're bleeding to death on the radio. <laughs> that broke me up, and it broke up everybody. <laughs> And uh, hopefully uh, that will not be uh, duplicated today. As mentioned earlier, it should be action-packed. And we are set for the introductions as James Pipps gets set to go against Jesse Benavides here at the George Brown Convention Center in Houston, Texas. Let's go to the ring announcer. Here is Ed Darian. From the George R. Brown Convention Center here in the city of Houston and in the state of Texas, the Houston Boxing Association Incorporated presents this afternoon's scheduled 12-round junior featherweight championship bout and is sanctioned by the United States Boxing Association, the Honorable Robert W. Lee President and Ms. Marion Muhammad, Executive Se Secretary, the Supervisor in Charge. The judges for this title bout is Robert Martin, Dave McCullough, and Chuck Bertani. The timekeeper to bell is Robert Barba, and the timekeeper for the knockdown seconds is Tom Rifko. In the ring at this time, the man in charge of the scheduled 12-round USBA Junior Featherweight Championship bout, Robert Gonzalez. And now, my good friends, introducing the principals. First, in the blue corner, wearing the black trunks with the gold trim. He weighed in at an even 122 pounds. This young man has 36 wins, one loss, one draw, with 29 knockouts. He is ranked number two by the World Boxing Association and the United States Boxing Association. Number six by the IBF and number 11 by the WBC. A native of Viner, Texas. Ladies and gentlemen, he is now residing in Pasadena, Texas. Here is the challenger, James Willow Warrior Pitts. 
And his opponent in the red corner, wearing the gold trunks with the red and blue trim. He weighed in at 121 and three quarter pounds. This young man is undefeated in 21 professional bouts with 16 knockouts. From Corpus Christi, Texas, ladies and gentlemen, here is the champion, Johnny Jesse Benavides. Benavides. Jesse Benavides out of Corpus Christi. His last fight, November the 20th, he won a 12-round decision over Greg Richardson in Atlantic City to take the USBA Junior Featherweight title. And James Pips making his third appearance of the year. What does Pips have to do to beat Benavides? Pips is a destructive fighter, so he has to create a shootout. He has a superior punching power. He has to apply body punches and, above all, cut off the ring on uh, Benavides. All right, we'll get to the subject of Benavides in uh, just a moment, but first, it is a special treat to bring on, celebrating his 50th year in sports broadcasting, here's Don Dunphy. Thank you very much, Marv Albert and you, Ferdy Pacheco. In the gold trunks, and you'll notice that he's a southpaw leading with the right hand as the USBA junior featherweight champion, Jesse Benavides. And his opponent, the puncher of Swarmer, James Pips. Pips has fought three Southpaws and has beaten all of them. He was stopped once in his career, and obviously, while he was down once in his own career, Benavides has never been knocked out. Benavides is a much superior boxer, yet right now he's not showing a great deal of angles or motion, but standing right in front of the highly destructive James Pips, whose nickname, Little Warrior, kind of tells it all. I think if Benavides has his mind on a counterpunch, at least that's the way it seems to me. And he got in there with a good left, a series of lefts. Oh, Benavides for a moment. Pips is in trouble on the ropes, but he's battling back. He scored well. More than a minute and a half left to go in the round. This is a sudden flurry that was unexpected. That's just what Pips wants, amazingly enough. He's used to taking punishment. He'll take it if he can get him in a shootout, if he can get Benavides in a shootout. Benavides, apparently a smarter fighter, good counterpuncher, and also a southpaw, which makes it more difficult for Pips. Pips has always had a hard time with the three southpaws he fought. He had a very difficult time. And of course, Benavides is the best of the three that he's fought. About a minute left in round one of a 12-rounder. And at this pace, it's hard to believe it will go 12 rounds. There's already a little reddening of the eye to the right of uh, the brow of James Pips. He took a hammering in that corner, but that's the style of Pips. He has He's landed got... himself, though, Ferdy. He scored. He's got iron in his jaw. This Pips is the kind of kid that gets you excited and keeps you excited all 12 rounds because he just keeps coming. He's a throwback to some of those gentlemen that you saw in the 40s and 50s, the Lamadas and the Rosanos. Whooping it up, it's a good fight. There's Pips coming back. And Benitez built an early lead. Pips is going to try to win a look down, and he's doing that. Well, you see Pips going right to the body, trying to cut off the ring. That's what he wants. He wants to come ahead, and his best thing would be to get into a shootout with Benavides. Before the opening bell, we took a look at the Fight Doctor RX concerning James Pips. What about from the point of view of Jesse Benavides? Well, he has to keep his patience, try to avoid shootouts as he got into, and box, box, box. All right, on to round two. Marv Albert with the Fight Doctor, Ferdy Pacheco, and we are joined today by Don Dumpy. Here's Don. Here's the bell for round two. Benavides in the gold trunks. James Pips in the black trunks with the gold trim. Surprisingly enough, uh, Purdy, Benavides is standing there. I thought he'd have more movement. And that was what struck me in the first round. And also, he attacked and got into a shootout, which is what Pips wants. He's got power in both those hands. And as you said, Pips is going for the body. 
The schedule for 12. That first round, I gave to Benavides by a very narrow margin because of that tremendous rally where he landed the effective punches and scored a small cut over the eye of Pips. A small cut is now on the right eye of Pips. And so now the scoring is a 10-point must system. Big counter punch by Pips. Ten points to the winner of a round, nine or less to the loser. Now Benavides. Benavides picking up where he left off at the beginning of round one. Boy, Benavides is fast and flashy. He's got a good right jab. Emmanuel Stewart says they've been doing upper body strength uh, exercises, and he thinks he can bang hard enough to knock out Pips. You'll have to show me. Pips has got some kind of iron jaw. Well, it's not dull. Action packed. Certainly not a lot of fleet movement from Benavides. He's just planting his feet and throwing hard punches. There it is. He's hurt him again. It goes left hook. And Pips is down. He's sitting there. Jesse Benavides. He was just too much for James Pips, who was game as they come, but not good enough. Birdie is going up into the ring. Here's a replay of the knockdown. That, that left cross to the jaw, followed by two more. Pips is in trouble. The uppercut did him in, really. There he goes down. And Don Jesse Benavides, a fighter who has knockout power in both hands. James Pips, on the other hand, has been the master of the early knockout in the first to second round, but he was victimized here today. We'll be right back. We are back in Houston, Texas, where Jesse Benavides has successfully defended his USBA Junior Featherweight crown. For the official announcement, let's go to the ring for Ed Darian. Ladies and gentlemen, the time of this bout, two minutes and 50 seconds of the second round, and the winner by a knockout for his 22nd straight win in his many pro bouts, and still the USBA Junior Featherweight Champion, German Jesse Benavides. Benavides. 22 and 0, 17 by knockout. He's the USBA Junior Featherweight Champion. To put this all into pers perspective, the IBF Junior Featherweight Champ is Jose Sanabria of the U.S. The WBC title holder in that uh, weight classification is Daniel Zaragoza of Mexico. And the WBA champion is Bernardo Pinango of Venezuela. And the thinking is that Benavides eventually will get a shot uh, at one of the other major title holders. He has already beaten the IBF champ, Jose Sanabria. The fight doctor is alongside Benavides, so let's get back to the ring. Well, a new side of Jesse Benavides, punching power. You know, I rode in the elevator with this man, Emmanuel Stewart, one of your trainers who told me, we've been doing upper body strength, you're going to see a puncher today, but I didn't believe him. <laughs> yeah, first of all, I'd like to say hello to all my fans in Corpus Christi and San Antonio. Freddie, we've been working hard on punching power. As an amateur, I was known as a powder puncher, was good at scoring points. But as a professional, I have to start hurting people, and, and we've been working on it with the help of Tony Ayala. Well, you, you've hurt you've hurt someone who's got a cast iron jaw. I just yeah. didn't think I'd ever see Pips go down from that and then refuse to get up. Yeah, well, I told you Saturday that uh, the people were counting him the the puncher, and they didn't realize that I could punch too. I have 16, I got 17 now, and 22 fights, so they better watch out. We're trying to see it on replay, although we have no monitor to watch mm -hmm. it. And just tell me in your own words, what did you see? Did you see an opening you could land, or were you just seeing a flurry of punches? What did you see? 
I was, well, he was covering up pretty much, but like I told you, his defense was uh, his main uh, weakness, and I knew I could hit him. I was trying to set up things with my jab and coming over with the uh, wide left because he had his, high, his hand pretty pretty high, so I was coming over the with the looping uh, left shot, and I caught him, and then I just started throwing combinations. You also seem to disregard his punching power. You weren't scared of this guy? This guy can punch. No, he can punch, but I wasn't scared. I wasn't going to be intimidated. My Emmanuel Tony told me to, uh, for me to set the tempo, not to let yeah. him set the tempo. That's Tony Ayala Sr. We've seen enough of him on NBC with Tony Ayala Jr. You've done another good job in training. Thank you, uh, uh, Freddie. It's uh, a, lot of, a lot of credit has to be given to the fighter himself. The fighter is, uh, is the main course here yeah. main ingredients all you have to do all I have to do is tell Jesse where the openings are and uh, we've been working together real good well, look looks like we're gonna see a lot more on NBC boxing and now back to Marv Albert at ringside all right Ferdy so Jesse Benavides at 250 of the second round stopping the 27 year old out of Vider Texas James Pips for Pips it is only his second defeat as a professional his only other loss took place back in November of 1983 he was stopped by Gabby Canizales in the sixth round and the only other prior blemish on his record a third round technical draw against uh, Pasquale Aranda that was in 1986 James Pips is now alongside Ferdy. Well, James, I'm sure a big disappointment, but uh, were you embarrassed by a second-round knockout? A uh, little bit, you know. I was discouraged through the whole fight, really, you know. Uh, well, it didn't last that long to be discouraged about. It's only two minutes into well, the second that's round. that's why it didn't last as long as it did, you know. I was discouraged from the get-go, I believe. I don't know. What, what do you mean, discouraged? I don't know. I just didn't feel right. felt weak. I didn't feel, you know, like I was up like I should have been. You know, I wasn't pumped up. Well, I've seen many of your fights. You have a cast iron jaw. You went down. It looked to me like you could get up. I mean, why didn't you get up? Like I say, it discouraged. You know, I, I could have got up. I just, just, you know, I didn't feel right. felt weak. Well, you know, when you get to that stage in boxing where you feel like you can get up, but you don't get up, and you're questioning your own stamina like you did, you got thoughts about keep on going? I mean, uh, continuing in boxing? Yeah, yeah, I do. You know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to sit back and look at it all again, you know, and, and uh, I'll make a decision later. Well, Kenny Weldon, who's certainly been in many, many corners of championship fighters and fighters, were you amazed that he didn't get up, this kid with his hard jaw and his huge heart that he's got? I was not just a little bit amazed. I was totally amazed. But more than anything else, I was amazed at the fact that he come out here like uh, he was going to a uh, Easter egg hunt. And the other guy come out here hunting wild boar, you know, <laughs> and uh, you can't, you can't beat a guy like that if you come out here pitter patting around and uh, mess. I don't know what he was doing, you know. This is just wasn't his day. It wasn't his day, is right. And back to Marv Albert at ringside. All right, Ferdy, and as you'd expect, uh, great discouragement from the camp of James Pips, a knockout victim, Jesse Benavides, doing it at 250 of round two.